Beautiful. All right, welcome to the Forest Coffee Break. Welcome to the uh, episode number 34. It's going a long way already. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, hope you are having a good week. And uh, last coffee break, my colleague Jaime was covering for me. And uh, now I'm back here, uh, back from vacation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's start with, you know, this is an open space for general questions, any topics that you might have. And uh, let me start with you. If you have any questions, any topics that you want to bring up, if you have any projects that you're working with. Or if we have a quiet audience today. I see a few new names. Um, cool. Thank you for joining for the first time. Would you like to open your microphone and? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, my name is Richard. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I work at a construction company uh, called Bim for All, and we work with uh, we work a lot with Rapid. And my uh, role is a data specialist, so I try to uh, create reports and that kind of stuff. And I use the Forge Viewer for that, but I don't really have any specific questions. So. I just came here to uh, uh, to Ooh. visit and to see what the other people are making. So that's great. It. Yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, yeah. Okay. So usually, usually what we do is uh, we open for you know, general topics, anything that you're working with. Uh, from time to time, we have a presentation. Someone that is presenting what they're working with, mm -hmm. and uh, I can uh, um, let me also extend the invitation if you. Uh, any of you want to present uh, what you're working with um, you know, any, any week, just, just send me a message. We can definitely arrange that. And I'll be glad to see what, what you guys are working with. It's good for sharing, good for getting feedback. Yeah, it would be nice maybe someday. Some cool. All right. Uh, okay. So I see a lot other people, or more people joining. Thank you for joining. So, uh, so what I also is usually start doing is to share some new information with you. And actually, there is something today that is you no know, fresh out of the oven um, here. So we are just releasing the uh, trade-off API inside um, the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And if you haven't tried that API, there is a you no know, sample documentation, uh, you no know, API reference, step-by-step -step tutorials. All of that is available. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Juan was working on that sample, aren't you? Yes, it's, it's coming soon, both of the samples. One, okay. one I made and the other one John made, both to, to read pro information from this API. Excellent. In the upcoming days, we'll have more details. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see here, sample coming soon. Uh, yeah. Anyone here working with uh, BIM 360 or ACC? Have you but worked with this, this one specific? specific for ACC, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. There's usually a few a few people on the on the coffee break that are using uh, Construction Cloud or BIM 360. Yeah, so that's the, the new trade-off API that's released today. I think last week we, yeah, or this week, but it's, it's going on for a few weeks now, this naming is standard um, that if you upload a file to, to Autodesk Docs, which is part of BIM360 or Construction Cloud, right? If you upload a file and there is a standard naming definition for that project, um, your file will be checked against that standard. And if you try to upload a file, there is the possibility that your file is not accepted because no, your file is not matching the naming convention, uh, naming standard, sorry. Now, in that case, I believe the file will go to this uh, you know, sandbox where you can review the name later. So in case you try to upload a file and the, and the upload process is not coming through, it's possible that it's related to this because the customer owner of the of the account of the hub it's it's checking against standard and your api the, the upload is not matching 
that standard. Yeah, yeah, holding area for sure. I'm not sure if you have seen this before. And uh, I know that, um, and let me bring you to the spotlight. I know that uh, Nigelko, you asked us to do a demonstration of the uh, Node-RED sample. And uh, my colleague that is uh, that knows about that sample, he's actually busy this week. And uh, he said that he could do next, but you no, know, on the next coffee break. So in two weeks from now, we are, we'll do the, 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 the demo for you and for the, the others. Yes, okay, thank you. It's, it doesn't matter it's today or uh, next two <laughs> weeks, but just to see, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I hope it would be interesting for all of us. Yeah, the, the, that sample is quite nice. Uh, let me get here just for context, uh, forge or task. And uh, yeah, it's a visual programming tool that uh, you can essentially drag and drop the nodes, connect them and run some code uh, without coding. You can just connect the dots, connect the, the nodes. Uh, and we have a sample with that for Forge. And uh, uh, his name, my colleague's name is uh, Maduka. He will be presenting you know, on the next coffee break. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm talking for a long time. Let me, I see to have more people joining now. Uh, any questions, any topics from you? Jaime, you managed to fix your computer. Partially, not fully fixed yet. Uh, it's kind of like running on sometimes charges, sometimes doesn't. So, and I just realized that I have quite a lot of stuff to do for next week with the accelerator. For some reason, I thought I had one extra week, but I guess not. So I think I'm just gonna reschedule that appointment. Okay, we do have an accelerator coming next week, right? November 8th, Zenadu, and um, no, usually the accelerator, it's a, it's a place, it's a time that you can work in on your project. We help you during that week. Uh, if you have attended one, uh, if you want to attend again, it's also possible. Uh, we're still accepting applications, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, yes, it's still in are. time. To, yeah, it's still in time to apply if you haven't, uh, you haven't applied yet. And uh, yeah. Again, coming back to you, any any topics, any questions? Just be quick to apply, right, Jaime? So we have a few days. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Like, but for some reason, I, I don't know. Like, I I forgot that we're already in November, so. <laughs> yeah, it's already two months to the end of the year. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> um. Okay, so let me bring someone else to the spotlight. Uh, Peter, you did this very uh, Halloween-y kind of blog post and well, lots of pumping <laughs> in here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was just this, uh, I, I, I had this idea about maybe going a bit more into the details on some of the basic stuff in extensions, right? Because I mean, extensions are really, I think an important aspect and concept of the viewer development Right, and I mean, we. I mean, I've been I've been doing this for a long time, but um, I I felt you know over time I've been realizing that there are some parts of the extension mechanism in the viewer that uh, maybe some people may not know about. Like right, I mean, you know, about like the different ways of passing options or passing input parameters to the extensions, <clears throat> right? Or that you can actually like the the last that last section here says you can actually expose some sort of a state of your extension to the viewer so that when somebody wants to capture the entire state of the of their viewer at some point in time they can actually include the state of your extension as well so later on when that state is um again um loaded right your extension can be initialized to some specific um state of its own as well yeah. I think that last part was the surprise for me. I didn't know about that one. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's not yeah. that well known, right? I figured yeah. it might be worth mentioning it in like this, you know, general um, extensions topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's actually an, another blog. I mean, this one I think I would definitely recommend to check out if again if viewer extensions are your almost like daily bread, like 
like for me. Um, there is another one. I actually published another blog post yesterday that might be of interest. That one is about streamlines. I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but um, the data visualization extension, right? A new addition to the Forge platform portfolio. It now allows you to build um, animated streamlines, right? Those are like really useful for doing things like um, indicating movement of something, right? People around the facility, particles, or you know, really anything uh, like movement of stuff. Um, it's um, it's something that uh, we plan on extending over time, but it's already I think uh, a relatively simple but already pretty useful feature. I think um, the, the idea is that you know you use this one singleton class from the viewer extension um, called Streamline Builder, and you can use it to create new instances of streamlines, and then you can animate them by basically advancing them, right? So advancing in this in this context basically means um, adding new XYZ position to the end of this polyline. And at the same time, we also remove the last, um, or I mean the first point, right? Uh, from the polyline to keep the, the usage of GPU buffers fixed, right? So that we don't have to resize them all the time. So you can say that, you know, my line will have 64 points my streamline, right? And then you can keep calling this advanced method on your streamline, which will keep adding new point to the end and removing this, you know, the oldest or the last point from the beginning. Um, so that way you can animate, you know, animate things quite nicely and easily. Uh, you can set up, you know, line thickness, opacity, colors. Uh, for now, just on the streamline level, um, globally for individual streamlines. But later on, the idea is that you will also be able to control the thickness and opacity and color um, of the individual points along the streamline, right? So you can have them, you know, differently colored, um, you know, with again, different opacity to indicate other types of um, value changes along the path of the streamline. So I'm thinking this might be pretty interesting. I was, I was, I was thinking if maybe there is some sort of a, like a, some sort of a real time data source, something we could use to maybe read like you know simulated yeah. movement of cars around a city block. I think that would be a pretty interesting use case, right? Have Forge Viewer load some infrastructure model and then use these uh, streamlines to indicate movement of cars. Um, yeah, yeah, but animating small tornadoes is useful as well, right? So. Again? Yeah, this one exactly exactly <laughs> see i haven't thought about that yes <laughs> yeah so i was that is something that all that always comes to mind to me let me find here from um uh Ethan. where is it Ethan? he did something very nice with um uh, with revit that you can play with that oh. as well like finding some some path, like exit path. Yes. Where is oh, it? That is cool. That's actually was, another was thing that I was thinking about. Uh, oh. To have some sort of an indication of like I was thinking about some kind of a, a pathfinding algorithm inside a Revit mm -hmm. design from a given. Yeah, and already is working on something like that. I've just seen a presentation from him, so maybe you should yeah. talk to. Him. Sorry, I, no, I think. I think Revit actually has a feature for that, and it's yeah. just that that information doesn't come through. Um, yeah, oh, I nice. think this is a this is the blog post from Ethan okay. playing with that. But he, you see, he did something else. He did he oh, used a different kind along the path. Yes. Yeah. And the but path that, is drawn by that, hand. Do you know? No, no. That path you can extract using Revit API. Awesome. All right. So yeah, that's, um, yeah I'll talk to Ethan. I think, I think API pretty... exit route. There is something there to do it. Uh, there is a new API. I think on the latest okay. version. Yeah. I, I I think it's path of travel, something like that. Path of travel. Okay, I'll talk to Ethan. I think that would be a pretty pretty interesting um, sample demo use case mm -hmm. yeah. using the streamlines to indicate. Like a yeah path to towards, well exit from a building. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, I think that's the video. It's, uh, let me speed this up. Normal. I'm becoming, becoming, yeah, uh, he's drawing the lines. Oh, okay. so this is now being drawn by hand. Okay. Yeah, What's but there is a way, th is there is a Revit API for sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm becoming addicted to have uh, videos in twice the speed now. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> it saves time, right? So, yeah. Do you watch movies that way? <laughs> no, not movies. But I'm I'm watching I'm watching classes on uh, what's the name that uh, Coursera thing, and it's always twice the speed. It's way way better. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and and audios on on WhatsApp you can do twice the speed as well. Okay. Cool. Um, any questions? Any from anyone else? Any topics? Hi guys. Hi Michael. Here's Michael. I have a question, not about this last subject, but about uh, the new version of, of the viewer mm -hmm. API. I saw a video that you guys posted on LinkedIn that says that uh, old apps that uses the version one, we will have to adapt it. For, uh, but in a flag thing, I, I'm not sure. Like I ha we have to do something to adapt the new version of, of uh, the viewer with our last, or sorry, our last uh, apps, something like this. We have to adapt it to make it work with the new viewer version. So. I'm not sure we, what, what you're talking about. And you can definitely share your screen if you have anything. Uh, but in general, now we are on version 7.55. And uh, yeah. that was released, released last Friday. And you mm -hmm. see it's a minor version. So it should not be breaking anything because it's a minor okay. version, right? And, and you don't have to do anything, right? Awesome. The last time you had to do something was on the version six to version seven, which is a major breaking change, but now it's just minor, right? But okay, if you have anything, uh, if you saw anything else, you can also share your screen if you have it. Oh, actually it was the, the video about that. Just or if, if you share the link. LinkedIn, just, I'm gonna open it. Here. Yeah, just send us a link. Okay. Yeah. Um, Probably I misunderstood something on the video. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm trying to think could it have something to do with the SVF2 endpoints? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it? it comes here, right? 7.48. So I don't think you should be, you should be wrong here. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, just, the API, uh, yeah. the API and the ENV, it's suggested that you update them because we're going to deprecate eventually the old API and ENV values, but um, it's not a requirement yet. Yeah. Okay. And that's only if you're viewing SVF two. The old, the older endpoints or API and ENV environments for SVF one should still be okay. Oh, okay. So just to emphasize, right? If you, if you are re only moving to SVF two, you can choose that uh, that new streaming V two or production two for SVF two. But if you if you don't if you still want using uh, SVF, you don't have to make any changes. So your code should just keep working, your existing code. Okay, uh, nice. Yeah, it, I'm afraid because we we use Bing three sixty. So I understood in, uh, watching the video that the, the models on Ben360 will be using the version two, right? Yes. So yes, uh, SVF. I'm using the version one on my apps. So that's what I'm afraid to, to break the app because we uh, use uh, Ben360 model. So, so basically, you're going to have to adjust something then if you're using the translation that's provided by BIM360Doc service, because 
certain formats, which include Revit, Navisworks, uh, DWG, those are all being translated to SVF2 now. Um, so if you're, but, but the metadata itself should still be the same. The only difference is the object IDs now have a new schema for how they're generated. So object IDs from SVF1 don't match SVF2. But and, uh, and, I use, I take all the, the object IDs and using the, your, your, the code that you have on your tutorial, I use it to take the, the DB IDs. So it's going to still work for me, right? Yeah, OK. That's yeah, so so the, the, the same code will still work. The only thing that that is changing is that that changed is that if you get the ID and store on a secondary database outside of your system, that I, that ID will no longer match the, the the model if that model is upgraded to SVF two. Okay. So if uh, if, if you're if, yeah, so if if you're just viewing the model and using the IDs and data inside the viewer, there is no change. But if you have a database linking outside, then you have to remap if needed. But if you don't have that database, no, nothing changes. Okay, cool. That's it. Cool. And, and thank you for yeah. you weren't using the um, Fluent workflow from before, right? The OTG Fluent to view BIM 360 SVF2. Probably not from his face. He doesn't. Yeah. Know. So he probably so it's, it's a, yeah, probably. Yeah. Not. <laughs> that, so, that, so that, that was during the beta. That was yeah. the beta. Yes. That and yeah. that will be deprecated. So yeah. just, okay, no. just be aware. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> August is right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm just looking at his face. Oh, what is that? Okay, I don't know. Okay, so he's not using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was just a beta server. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for the Thank question, Michael. Thank you. So let me quickly switch to Jaime. You said you want to show us something, right? Yeah, I've been working on just a small thing. Uh, let's see. I, I'm pretty sure you guys are very familiar with our tutorial. Um, but I found this uh, quick source uh, code samples that they have on the data visualization um, documentation. One that actually kind of like caught my eye was to display like heat maps with rooms and so on. But I am aware that, for example, if you want to start using the, the data visualization itself, you have to kind of like set up the entire reference app, uh, load a couple of projects in the back, everything it's made with React. And I kind of wanted to see if there was a way to sort of keep this a little bit simple. Um, so I'm like just basically starting into being able to just kind of like display um, that same kind of like workflow itself into just one of the isolated extensions, similar to what we have with these other extensions that I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with that we have in the Learn Forge material. So once we have that kind of like visualization itself, it can start creating the same kind of like workflow in order to do the displayment of temperature in different rooms. You can set up the rooms itself based on the um, on the location uh, within the um, within the points where you set up this uh, locations, and then at the same time also do some kind of like visualization animation into some kind of like workflow itself from there. So I'm I'm putting this together because I'm I'm gonna be attending AWS reInvent, and we have an Autodesk Forge class that it's kind of like dedicated into smart building, but more also into the AWS Quick Start that I got to work on. So in that way, you can use AWS to set up the entire architecture of your applications without actually the need of doing the, the manual workflow of setting up the VPCs, the AC2s, the load balancers, the different kind of subnets with public and private subnets and so on. So yeah, that's that's kind of like what I've been like playing around with. Um, I'm pretty sure that at some point, since this actually was not too difficult to kind of go through, um, I might start looking into something like the visualization itself of like heat map into the model. So I'll say, check it out. It's it's actually not too not too crazy and complicated to 
to kind of like identify. Um, the only thing is that a lot of the things right now are kind of like hard coded when it comes to the positions, but this this positions itself at some point could be like obtained from. Uh, I think there was one that I saw that the team actually show. Uh, it's like Hyperion Playground. So basically, you're able to, and this is something that I'm pretty sure it should be somewhere on GitHub um, that you can start adding, like let's say points into the into the location. So you can set up one, two points here, and another one here, and another one here, and then from there you can start looking into the the sensor list of where actually do they get located into the into the model. Uh, with the value of the DVID, the ID of the area we're just putting up the point, and then also the position itself with the XYZ um, uh, coordinate, uh, what kind of sensor you're setting up, and so on. So this kind of uh, information could be brought up into the into your your extension itself, and then I'm pretty sure like instead of hard coding it, you can obtain the values that it's getting created with this section list, and then just publish it in that way it doesn't work only for one specific model but you can also make it work for some other models as well um and yeah i think that's that's it for me looking forward to have the blog and the sample you said yeah yeah no i, I, I i'm still kind of like working on this but then i'm getting caught up with accelerator stuff for next week so it might take a little bit longer yeah I think I saw you posting on Twitter something about that. Yeah. That's, that's why I was remembering. Yeah. Cool. Really nice. Any questions to Jaime? Because I see a question from Toge. You were asking about AR, VR? Toge? Any AR, VR development progress? What, um, what kind of progress? <laughs> um, but no, yeah. Yeah, as far as I can. As far as I know, unfortunately, not nothing. Nothing worth mentioning. We we will we will let you know as soon as there is uh, something you can play with. Um, but yeah, no no recent updates on ARVR support, unfortunately. Oh, cool. thank you, Toge. Thank you, Peter. Jaime. All right. So last chance for questions. We are almost at the end of our <clears throat> coffee break. Uh, I'm sorry, I joined very late because the in Denmark they changed one hour uh, behind, so I thought this half passed by, so I, I just catch it. So, so I'm like, no problem. Actually, Thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah, the last five minutes. <laughs> it's just the time changed like yesterday. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have just questions not related to data visualization. I'm just asking if there is any plan in the roadmap forge roadmap that we can export direct from Revit till, till uh, NWD or NWF without design automation. If it's like in the roadmap. You mean with, when you say without design automation, you mean using Revit desktop or using more derivative? Mm, using just model derivative. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't think we have that on our plans from Revit to NWD. Or like to Navis work. It's, uh, Navis yeah, to work. Navis, yes. From Revit to Navis, yeah. Yeah, without uh, design automation. Yeah, that's probably a good thing to 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 request or to make, to, to place a request, to requestment, uh, but we don't have that yet. I don't even know if you can do it actually from design automation because that's a plugin that needs to be installed into the Revit machine, right? Yeah, but I think that plugin is there, I believe. Yeah. That's what I was going to check here. Uh, I, I think I would say a couple of years ago, maybe, <laughs> but I don't know if it was <laughs> if it was there or not. I was in ah, yeah. into, so export. I was a student back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me check here. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking at the. Forge documentation, design automation for Revit, and uh, yeah. export nav is not available there. Yeah. Even even to design automation. So I need to make my hopes a little bit uh, less. <laughs> yeah, so 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 keep in mind that the Revit engine running on design automation is the same engine you have locally, right? On your yeah. local machine. Yeah. Yeah. The difference yeah. is that 
not all the features are available due to you no know, constraints, limitations, license, a lot of you no know, a lot of other things. And uh, you should go to the design automation API uh, documentation and go to restrictions. And then you see you know, what is not there for Inventor, Revit, 3D Max, and AutoCAD. Yeah, I understand. But I hope that one day it will arrive without design automation. So just single API, like uh, yeah. REST API, you can export it like yeah. similarly so, to uh, uh, model yeah. derivative. Yeah, so the, the, I believe the reason is not there on design automation. It's probably some sort of technical limitation yeah. uh, because of the way design automation instances are set up, right? So probably because of that. There are some other limitations, for instance, with the um, work sharing models yeah. so because of the way design automation works. And uh, a lot of those things are on our top priority list to implement in the, in the, in the future. So we are working on those, those limitations. So, yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are just one minute past. Let me switch here and uh, share my screen again. So thank you for joining today. Thank you for uh, attending. Thank you for the great questions, great discussions. Uh, as usual, I'll be posting the recording on, um, on Twitter and uh, YouTube video. And the next coffee break will be on this same link, same time in two weeks. I know that the US is changing uh, daylight saving this weekend and uh, it's 8 a.m. Um, US Pacific time. So it, it may change for you, but it's still 8 a.m. Uh, US Pacific. So I think it will see. get back to the same time that Abed was used to. It's just because yes. friends. Yeah, Euro, Europe changed sooner than, no, I think UK changed the week this, this weekend, yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> there is and some Augusto, I just there. wanna, I just wanna say something very important. Actually, Peter from uh, in, in Germany and uh, Jim Currency, they holding uh, in Norway, I guess 9th of November. It would be good if there is companies around Nordic they would like to join. They would speak about Forge and all that stuff. It's uh, it's yes. 9th of November. Yes, that's an event that uh, uh, Peter Schlipp and Jim Currency will be yeah, hosting December, in. Sorry. in Yes. Uh, yeah, December. December. Yeah, December. Yes, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Aben. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you in two weeks. Thank you for joining today. Thank, right. you, guys. thank you, Bye, guys. Bye, Dan.